Welcome everyone, my name is Erica, and as always, I'm joined with Liana, who is the Executive Director of the Nonprofit Center. And we're here to talk to you today in this segment about finance, specifically the finances that are involved in serving on a nonprofit board. So Liana, I've got to ask the obvious question in the room, which is, I thought we were talking about nonprofits. So what does finance have to do with it? Nonprofits need money to operate, just like everyone. No money, no programs, right? So finance is actually really important, and it's one of the key responsibilities of a board member. Board members are called fiduciaries. That's kind of a scary term. That term is terrifying. What does yes. that even mean? It means someone who's trusted to manage the assets of a company, of an organization. So board members actually have some responsibility to ensure the sustainability of the organization. And that means looking at the numbers and thinking about ways to save money, ways to increase revenue, all the things that you might do in your own personal budget. Now, is that true of all board members? Because I thought that, you know, there's a treasurer on every board. There's oftentimes a finance committee. So does every single person need to do something with the finances? You bring up a good point. The treasurer and the executive director give a report to the rest of the board. And so they're helping to tell the narrative of what's happening financially speaking. It's, again, about participation, active participation, really actually looking at the report before you get to the board meeting. And maybe as you're going through the numbers, you'll come up with a brilliant idea. Awesome. My experience has been that even if you're a little bit intimidated by numbers or you think, oh, I'm not a math person, the, the amount of finance needed to be, on this to be on any board is not too intimidating. I do want to tackle one myth. Okay that is all about finance, and that is that nonprofits can't make a profit. That is completely a myth. They're not taxed on earnings. They're not taxed on their profit because they're tax exempt, but they should make a profit like any other healthy business or organization, and board members actually can help with that. They can actually help figure out ways to earn more revenue and save money so that there can be some profit at the end of the year. And that makes so much sense because most nonprofits are serving some need in the community. And so if you think about that, if the organization runs out of money or gets into a tight spot, they're not going to be able to serve that need. That would be tragic. That's exactly right. So you mentioned income. And so if we're talking about income, now we're basically talking about that line item in a budget that's revenue. Revenue or income, right? So let's break down, if nonprofits can make money, what are some of the different ways that money comes into a nonprofit? That's a great question. So there are two types of revenue. There's contributed revenue, which is just as it sounds. People give you things. It might be money. It might be a grant. It might be sponsorship dollars. Um, it could be in kind. And then there's earned revenue, which is also just as it sounds. Nonprofits can earn revenue from the programs that they do. They can charge a fee. But they can also have membership dues. Um, they could rent out space in their building if they own one. There are lots of ways to earn revenue. So contributed individual donations, the one we're probably most familiar of. Somebody makes a donation. But then, of course, grants or foundations are giving money. Corporations sometimes will give money. And then this in-kind one. Let's break that down. What exactly does an in-kind donation mean? So in-kind is when someone gives you a thing that you would otherwise have to pay for, and that's their donation. It's not cash, but it's something that you can use. So for example, let's say you're a board member and your organization is having an event and you want to serve wine at the event. Well, you have your favorite wine store down on the corner. You go in and you ask the wine merchant if he would be willing to donate a case of wine for this event. And he says, of course, you're my best customer. I'd love to help that nonprofit. That's a donation that he is making, he or she, in kind. I love in kind donations because if you think about most small businesses, a lot of times they can't just make a cash donation. But a lot of them have goods and supplies. And they could easily donate a little bit here and there. All right, so we covered income. And like any budget, there's the money that comes in. I'm guessing there's also going to be the money that goes out, the expenses. So tell us a little bit about nonprofit expenses. How do those work? 
So nonprofit expenses actually aren't that dissimilar from business expenses. You've got rent, overhead, program fees, advertising, mileage, all kinds of things. Uh, So it's pretty similar. So a board member won't find it hard to go through those expenses when you get your report and look for things that might have increased or things that are decreasing unexplainably and ask questions. Again, your role is to sort of actively participate and get yourself familiar with what the organization is spending and why, and maybe start thinking about how they can save some money. And we have some great examples of that. Well, I love this because it's basically there's two ways you can help your organization financially. One is obviously you can help more money come in, raising money, asking for donations, but it sounds like you can also bring money into your organization by cutting, helping them cut expenses. One of my favorite stories about this is uh, we had a board member once who was able to look through the line item of the expenses and notice, wait a minute, these bank fees seem really high. The amount of money that the organization was paying to have a bank account seemed really high. And so the board member decided, well, I'm going to go talk to that bank. I bank there too, so let me go ask them. They went and asked the bank teller, talked to the manager, and the bank was willing to waive the fees because for nonprofits, they felt it was right to not charge them fees. That's the kind of impact you can make by participating actively on a board. And it may seem intimidating to try to raise $700 from people, but if you can save $700 in expenses, it's it's the same thing. Exactly. And you have an example too, right? I do. So I was once looking through some nonprofit numbers, and I noticed that the credit card fees were higher than the year before, but the revenue wasn't higher. Upon further investigation, it turns out that the organization's credit card machine was broken, and the assistant was manually entering every transaction, resulting in a half percent higher fee for every single transaction over a period of a year, which amounted to hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The easy solution, they got a new credit card machine and reduced their fees once again. So basically what we're saying here is, as you look at your organization's budget, which you will be presented with during a board meeting, just be curious. Ask questions. If something doesn't seem right or something seems off, just ask about it. And it might lead the leadership to discovering something that could be changed or fixed. Exactly. The more eyes, the better. Great. So that is the how to look at a budget. Now, there's another piece of finances, which is the financial report. Let's talk about how the financial report works. There are a series of reports, and they come at you every month or every quarter. But you'll get to look at the profit and loss statement. Then you'll get to see a balance sheet, which is like a snapshot in time of the organization's finances. You might see accounts payable, how much money is due, and accounts uh, receivable or accounts aging, which shows how much money outstanding is owed to the organization. And that's the one I always like to look at because If, for example, you're a membership organization and you start to notice that some people are 120 days late in paying their dues, that's a place where you can get involved. You could make a phone call to those organizations that are very late and say, hey, we'd love for you to rejoin. And it's an easy way to help out your organization earn more revenue. So there's one more form that we want to share because it's so instrumental to the nonprofit sector. It's called the Form 990. So what is that? So Form 990 looks just like a tax form. It shows income and expense just like your annual tax form. And it's a way for the IRS to monitor, and everyone else, to monitor your finances. Form 990 is available for public inspection. It's up on the website called GuideStar, and you can see any nonprofit's finances there going back several years. And that's important for a lot of reasons. You might be thinking of joining a board. Look at their finances. Are they struggling? Are they coming up negative every year? Is that a board you want to join? Maybe you do because you think you can help in that sense, especially if you love their mission. And the board is actually asked to look at Form 990 every year and sign off on it. And we have a great document in the portal 
that tells a board member exactly what to look for in Form 990 before signing off on it. So we encourage people to go to that portal because that is a great, great document. So here's a fun assignment we can give people now. If you can think of your favorite nonprofit, maybe somebody that you've been uh, exploring, possibly uh, working for or, or serving on their board, go find their 990. Go to GuideStar, download their 990, and use this document in the portal to try to understand the information that's listed there. See what you can find out about that nonprofit. And it'll be a great way to learn more about how they operate. And if you're donating to that nonprofit, that can be useful information. Absolutely. So Liana, thanks so much. We've covered a lot of the financial things. I think the biggest takeaway here is just, you're gonna be presented with financial information. Yes, it is your responsibility to pay attention to this. And yes, it's not overwhelming. You can handle it. Just ask questions, be curious. That's exactly right. Thank you, Erica. So we want to thank you again for joining us in this video. We're going to keep going with this series and dig into some more topics. We hope you will join us next time. Thanks so much.